John Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Time Tip. On today's video, we're on the FM9 again. I have the public beta for Firmware 6 released, and I want to show you a stereo dual amp template that I use all the time that makes use of some interesting features on the FM9, namely that you can run two amps, two delays, and two ultra high quality reverbs in just about any preset with very minimal CPU outlay. To get started, I have a PRS DGT. I'm just on the stock bridge pickup at the moment. I have the Brit 800 2203 high loaded up, and I've got a pair of my free cab IRs loaded in the cab block over here. I've done this because we're gonna add a second amp block in just a little bit, but for now, same IR loaded in there. So yes, it's just gonna sound like a mono cab, nothing special at the moment. You can get the IR for free in the video description. Let's have a listen to what this sounds like as a starting point. <laughs> That's a nice thick JCM 800 sound. I normally like to play with a little bit of plate reverb on here. So let's go to the end of the chain and add reverb number one over here. Pay special attention to the CPU meter because we're around 22.5% and it only jumps up by about 1.2% 1, 1 over here. This is with an ultra high quality reverb as well. This one's pretty subtle. It's the new gold plate type. Probably my favorite all around reverb for a subtle bit of ambience. <laughs> Another thing that I love about every fractal unit are the awesome sounding delays. So I'm going to add a delay to this preset between the cab and the reverb over here. I will also take this time to address a question that gets posed a lot. Why place the delay in the reverb after the cab and not between the amp and the cab to mimic, say, an effects loop setup? The reason is that if you're running a mono amp and a mono cab and you want to have stereo delays and stereo reverbs and to keep that stereo image intact, you can add it after the cab. And if you're just using delays that don't really have any kind of extra gunk or crust or drive on them, very technical terms right there, then the result is gonna be exactly the same as running a stereo cab at the end of the chain. Nevertheless, I have the 2290 with modulation set up for a panning delay. You can see we are at around 25% now. So I've added a high quality, not just high quality, an ultra high quality reverb and this lovely panning delay on here. And I've only increased CPU usage by about two and a half percent so far. <laughs> I mentioned at the start of the video that we can run dual amps, dual reverbs, and dual delays without too much of a CPU cost. So let's do that. I'm gonna add a second amp block in here. After all, this is why I set up my cab to be stereo. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna hit edit. I'm gonna copy this entire block over here. So it will save and copy the settings for all four channels in this amp block. I'm just gonna place it in parallel down here and I will cable it up. So you can see channel A has the exact same settings on both amp blocks. What I would like to do is run some stereo effects before the amps in here, as opposed to after them. And, you know, we'll use maybe a phaser later on or a tape echo, which is something which does have a different character in front of the amp as opposed to after the amp. So what we want to do is this. For this amp right here, let's set the input to left and I will set the balance all the way to the left. For the second amp, I will do the right input select and pan it all the way to the right. You can see the CPUs at around 25.7, 25.8%. So adding that extra amp was less than 1% impact on the total CPU over there. So I've got this set up now. So if I wanna run stereo effects before the amps, they're gonna maintain their stereo image. So if I've got say a stereo delay here, which I'll add in a second, it will, come into this amp, this will process the left input, 
it will go into this cab block where the left input is processed by this cab IR and fed to the rest of the chain. A similar thing will happen with the right inputs. It'll come into this amp and then into this cab IR over here, which is pretty cool. Uh, the other advantage is if I wanted to run slightly different settings on the amps or I wanted to use different amps on the left or right hand channel, I can do that as well. But for now, let's keep it nice and simple and let's come up here and add a delay. I'm gonna use delay two and I set this up with the stereo mind guy type over here. I cranked up the mix on it, added a bit of level. There's a little bit of drive happening in there and I've set up the modulation so that the modulation phase is at 90 degrees. Let's hear it at zero and then we'll hear it at 90 and at 90 it will sound a lot wider. I'm gonna use my volume control here Rather than setting it at 10, I'm gonna set it to around seven. So I'm getting a little less grit from the amp. This one sounds pretty awesome. Very, very nice indeed. Placing a delay pre-gain means that the delay repeats, which are all going to be lower in volume than one another, are going to clean up as you hit the front of the amp because essentially you're sending less signal into the front of the amp. If you want that kind of late 70s, early 80s, very percussive rhythmic delay types, you can do that instead of placing the delay after the amp. Now on the FM9, we've got two distinct delay blocks with four channels each. So without basically any big CPU cost, you can have it both ways. You can have your percussive rhythmic delays before the amp and you can have your panning lead delays after the amp like I've got them here. You know, we've added a reverb that's at ultra high quality. We've added an extra amp and we have added two delays in here and the CPU usage is only increased by about 5%. I've swapped over to the band commander over here in both channels. I need to do my stereo setup. So we'll go left and panned left and then right input and panned right over here on these. And these are good to go. I'm gonna place one of the new spring reverb types in front of the amp over here. You can see now we're at 28% CPU usage. This is with the tube spring over here. This one at stock settings just sounds gorgeous if you like your clean sounds. We'll hear it with a bit of that delay in just a second, but for now. <laughs> drippiness of that spring combined with that deluxe mind guy delay on there. Let's say you didn't want to use a spring and you didn't want it in front of the amp, but you wanted to have a dedicated set of say pitched reverbs. Let's drag this towards the end of the chain and let's maybe go to channel B. I'll select the Ursa major reverb type in here, which uses an octave and two octaves up on here. I'll crank the mix. You can see the CPU meter has not budged on here. So I've added this gorgeous sounding shimmering reverb on here. And again, two delays, two reverbs, two amps and a stereo cab. And I'm barely scratching a quarter of the CPU usage. <laughs> Thank you. 
Using this approach means that you can use, say, the delay and the reverb block for applications that aren't strictly delay or reverb as well. For example, if you wanted to have a low CPU usage preset or you were starting to push the CPU usage on a stacked preset, but you wanted a chorus in your preset, you could use a delay block for chorusing. In this case, I've got the 2290 with modulation. The delay time is at 15%, the feedback is at zero, mix is at 50%, and I have dialed in some modulation using LFO1 over here. This is gonna create a massive wide sounding chorus on top of my lead sound. I'm also using the new 5153 100 watt stealth red model over here and a 2290 with modulation set up for a panning delay again. So let's have a listen to what this 2290 chorus adds to the picture here again without impacting the core CPU usage. It's amazing. <laughs> Another advantage of having two reverbs or two delays would be if you've got a preset where you want to switch between two different types yet still have the reverb or delay tails sustain out between scene changes. You can just use a dedicated type in the reverb, say for your smaller reverb and what I'm doing over here, have say a big ambient reverb on your other reverb block. Turn this on when you need the big ambient reverb, turn it off as you change scenes or just turn it off using the onboard foot switches, however you like to work it, it's totally up to you. But the idea there is that you're barely using any CPU to get that advantage out of your preset. Same idea as using say a delay block as a chorus instead of the chorus block on there or having dual delays that you can run on there to create really unique textures. It's very, very powerful in there. And I mean, this preset is already doing most of the things that I would ever need to do at a gig and it's running at under 30%. With this stereo amp setup as well, if you had say external pedals that are stereo that you wanted to run into the FM9, just change out this input block over here for input two or input three. So you could use the FM9 as a stereo pedal platform that way, which is going to appeal to a lot of people. Another fun trick that I really like, let's stay with this uh, 5153 stealth setup would be, let's say you take a modulation effect like the phaser over here and basically go into any of the stereotypes over here. In fact, you don't even need to use a stereotype. Say, take the script 90 over here and go to the LFO section. I just dropped my pick. You can see these new LFO monitors over here and you can set the phase to 90 or 180 degrees. In this stereo setup, this will create this really lovely width that you don't get with the phase at zero. So let's hear that. <laughs> That's a great trick to add some movement to your rhythm parts or a little bit of extra spice to your leads. I haven't even mentioned in this video, but I'll reiterate again, scene, channel, and preset changes on 
the FM9 with this firmware are now gapless, which opens up so many new workflows. I did a video last week about using sets and songs with the gapless changes, which I'd recommend you check out as well. But for now, thanks so much for checking out this video. Let me know what other topics you would like to see covered on future Tuesday Tone Tips. And have a great week playing your guitars. I'll see you all on the next Tuesday Tone Tip. Cheers.